Daring Abroad is brought to you by our friends at Remitly. Download the Remitly app to send money back home. Hello and welcome. It is good to have you with us. Today's show is jam-packed with inspiration. From Kentucky, we will tell you how an artist and a graduate of the University of Nairobi is carving his way into America's art scene. So far, I'm going to be a and from our own backyard, we will show you how a tech company is transforming the hauling business in Kenya. Ngamia provides an ICT platform for transporters to actually access jobs through request by consumers. The consumer can be anywhere within the world. My name is Michael Zimanji. Let's start the show with our very own Alex Chamwada. While driving through Lexington City, Kentucky, chances of stumbling upon some public art pieces are very high. And you'll be surprised, this is the work of a daring Kenyan artist, Matthew Kipto Tarus. You see, Kipto is a sculptor by profession with over 13 years of experience in the world of art. Most of the times, the city will commission me, or even private, private people will still commission me for those. Art is the soul of the community, especially when you know dealing with all these things happening in America or in, around the world. Art, I think, is is an avenue to get some energy when you you have to recuperate, rejuvenate yourself, feed your mind, feed your soul. You know, when you go to to listen to live music, have a sculpture around you. It's beyond the material satisfaction. This is what Kipto has been doing for the past nine years since arriving in the U.S. in 2013. I paint, I do ceramics, I do pots, and I make um, sculpture out of wood, I make mixed media out of metal, out of uh, plastic, computer-generated designs. So I pretty much I double up in a lot of mediums and materials. Kipto's preferred working material is wood. Sometimes when you look at a piece, it really evokes maybe some anger in you. Sometimes you look at a piece, it shows so much joy to you. So all these emotions, it might either be good or bad. What you see is what you get. You don't need to be beautiful, yeah. Some, some artists are known for just making art they art, but you know, they still evoke. And they, that's, that's what, you know, uh, the, the human mind is attracted to. Watching Kipto work is not only captivating, but also therapeutic. Seeing the art come alive and his vision manifest is definitely a worthwhile experience. Wow! Beautiful! Kipto says his interest in sculpting started back in 2004 when he joined the University of Nairobi's Architecture, Design and Development Faculty. University of Nairobi, that's where I learned my fundamentals of what art is. You know, I, I took illustration and that's where I started drawing the human form. The human anatomy is the most important uh, aspect of art. And especially if you're a sculptor, you really know how to to get all the muscles, the bone structure, you know, how the skin lays on your, on your body. You really have to get that, to understand that. And that's what I was taught at Nairobi University by uh, mm -hmm. one and only uh, Francisco Odundo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, a, it, it's one of the most important places to learn in Africa. And I think there's, there's so many things to be done inculcates a lot of 
practical functionality and then when you get out to the industry you you know you just pick it up and go you know so that's what i really like about what Nairobi university imparted in my life and after graduating in 2008 with a bachelor of arts in design majoring in illustration kipto worked in the banking sector for some time he later started his own graphics design company king concepts but his passion was elsewhere i want to explore some more art you know but the thing was sculpture equally very el elusive my company could take over what i was doing for the bank and then so i got myself time to actually start practicing art okay yes <laughs> Straight on in Likwari to apply. You apply to, to universities, you know. And it took a couple of years to actually be accepted. But uh, uh, Batumzuri, University of Kentucky, gave me a scholarship to come in and do sculpture here. What really happened, there's a professor from University of Kentucky, Alikuja Kenya, Nairobi, for his sabbatical, just holiday. But he came to my Nairobi University just to look at what the art is going on there. And that's when I was introduced by my own professors in Nairobi to him. His name is Gary Bibbs. Mm -hmm. And so Gary Bibbs told me about uh, Manene Masters. So upon mm Nikajua, -hmm. where to apply, and you know, he gave me you know, the directions of how to maneuver it. Yeah, it's not really easy, but especially if it's in the art world, it's a very small world. And uh, you really have to prove to qualify. You, know, you need to compete. Yes, North it's Paris. very competitive. Mm. It's very competitive. Mm. And, you know, especially in my field of sculpture, it's even more competitive, you know. Most of the schools don't offer just the undergrad for sculpture. Most of the schools will offer masters for sculpture. Mm. And so you have to first get through your undergrad so that you get to the sculpture okay. program. Since arriving in the U.S., Kipto has made great use of the opportunity to relocate here. He's even been able to make a name for himself in the world of art through his business. I have my own studio. I run my own gallery. I have my own outdoor space. And, you know, I'm also I employ people here, too. So that's the best thing about, you know, being an artist is that you can have help and assistance and still have it be your name. Well, I have assistants in my studio, two, two assistants, and foreman, actually, Uncle Mike here is, a, is kind of like the manager of foreman. I can only do so much here at the studio, so sometimes you really have to get help. Most of uh, established artists, they employ assistants, you know, you cannot do it by yourself. Everybody loves Kip. Kip is super friendly. He, he's kind of a person, he uh, knows everybody's name, he has that knack. You know, for, for people's names that, you know, I can never remember anybody's name, but if you tell Kip your name, he knows who you are. And the next time he sees you, he addresses you by name. And, and he just, whenever he goes in to see people, and I think, Kip, this he's is not going to happen. He's not near in Lexington, Lexington. Everybody, yeah, you know, whenever you go, to, wherever you go, you sit down in a restaurant, somebody comes up and says, Hi, Kip, how you doing? Da, 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 da. Every, I mean, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and his art is everywhere. He's and his art is around, yes, and everybody knows about his, when you say, Kip, they go, oh, who's Kip? It's, you have somebody who doesn't know him, and then you say, well, this piece of art, and they go, oh, that guy. Another motivating factor for Kipto is the fact that he is not alone. Kenyan artists are making it big here in a land of opportunity. Yes, there's a lot of Kenyans, actually. I mean, from the top contemporary artists that are, you know, making like Wange Shimutu, she's dominated New York and bigger cities, and she's now in Kenya, has a studio in Kenya. There's uh, my friend in Oregon, Washira, who is also doing a lot of um, mixed media and paintings and music. I can count different states that, you know, Kenyans are around and, and making it happen. This is quite positive for Kipto, who draws most of his inspiration from Kenyan artists. There's a lot of uh, really great artists in, in Kenya who have been inspired. First of all, his name is uh, Billy Kaigua Kagunju, Kopale Kuona Trust. And then Kuna Kota Otieno, Kuna Gomba Otieno. Especially in the Kuona Trust family and uh, 
also in uh, the Go Down Art Center. For Kipto, coming to America was a good decision. I'm paying all my bills, even send money home. The best thing is that I really like what I'm doing. So within that constraint, money gets to be very, very small of an issue. To me, I'm doing what I like. So that's really, I think it's a blessing to be able to be doing this and getting paid. But this does not mean that the Langata native has closed the chapter on Kenya. No, no, I'm not here to stay. I'm here to continue what has been, I've been doing, you know, because eventually I want to have an act of peace too in Kenya, probably inside city center in Nairobi or Eldoret, Nakuru. There's so much sculpture to be put out there. There's so much to celebrate in Kenya that, you know, just the paintings and uh, the other kinds of art forms will not just satisfy. You know, with sculpture, you know, it's immediate satisfaction when you look at big pieces. Like the word, uh, yeah, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. We need uh, other people too. And as we conclude, this is Kipto's plan for the future. We need some other inspiring, bigger sculptures in Nairobi, in East Africa, in the whole of Africa, you know. Some, maybe one day I put up something in South Sudan, you know, or in Angola or in Cameroon, you know, we just, because that is what, you know, right now we need to push for that, for outdoor pieces, cultures that inspire people in the city, in the towns. That is not just here in America or in different places of Europe. People need to see sculpture in Africa, you know, and that's, I think, is, is what I'm getting ready for. What a creative way of capturing the essence of Africa through art. Thank you, Alex, for that story. Time now for a break, but when we return... Ngamia provides an ICT platform for transporters to actually access jobs through request by consumers. The consumer can be anywhere within the world. How Ngamia Africa is transforming the hauling industry in Kenya through innovation and technology. Welcome back to the show. Now, times are changing in the business world, and for you to be able to survive, you need innovative ways that are based on technology. And today, on our Back Home segment, Alex Chamwada tells us about one such company. Their name, Ngamia Africa. It is a typical morning for Jeff Muraguri, who is currently on his way to Westlands in Nairobi County. The reason to deliver pagolas, a kind of wooden tents to a client who is preparing for a wedding. His journey takes him approximately one hour and upon arrival, Jeff springs into action. It's an Indian wedding. Their weddings uh, go in various stages. They normally last about two or three days. So we're setting up today for them. Uh, we're doing one pagola. Then on Friday, we do another, the main pagolas, about five of them. For the main event, will be on Saturday. I've been a transporter for about 20 years. I do events in uh, maybe even up to Mombasa, Nakuru, all over the country. Wherever the, the client wants me to go, I go there. About three kilometers from Jeff's location, we find Justus Shikanda a logistics expert and director will smove us. Justus is in the process of assigning routes for his three truck drivers. We transport uh, maybe the farm products or the household or the, the building material. We do long distance transportation within Kenya and East Africa. Also do moving in the location. Now, the interesting thing about these two individuals 
is not their similar businesses, but rather their use of a relatively new software application that is causing a star in the hauling business by the name Ngamia Haulers Platform. Yes, through technology and innovation, Ngamia Haulers Platform has introduced a new way for clients and haulers to link up. But what exactly is it and how does it work? Jonathan Dede is the managing director at Ngamia. Ngamia provides an ICT platform for transporters and consumers. What we do, we give a platform for transporters to actually access jobs of transportation within our platform through request by consumers. And these consumers can be consumers who are moving farm produce. They could be consumers who are moving houses from one place to the other. They also can be consumers who are in construction and hardware business. We realized that uh, in the country, Kenya specifically, most of businesses were looking at e-hailing, the business of taxi, which actually were running on uh, e-platforms. And there was no business that uh, was just taking care of uh, transportation of items. So we have uh, businesses in the transportation sector, but they own assets and at the same time they are trying to give you technology to do business. So we looked at it and realized that if we could just give platform so that the majority of transporters who actually do business do not have to engage with us as a business, but they could actually just use our platform to get business. The major challenges we have in this field is cutthroat competition in this field. When you're doing general transport, if let's say most of, most of the transport we do is building materials, the influx of so many trucks into the business means the prices fluctuate downwards, they spiral, they spiral downwards. What I prefer to do is get more business at a lower price to break, even, to break even. In most of these cases, there are brokers in between. And brokers will come in and undercut you. You may talk to the cli client, a broker will come in, offer a rate much lower than you, are, than you, than you gave, and of course, the client, everybody wants to save uh, the, uh, as much as they can. So you, lose, you end up losing the business. It's been uh, a challenge for most of the people, for pretty much the consumers and also transporters. So uh, we developed an application which is running both on mo mobile application, Android and iOS. So it was out of a need to serve that Ngamia Holler's platform was born in 2019. Now that we know the what and why, let's find out more about the how. We have two types of transporters. We have those transporters who are like, uh, they run companies, so we call them organized. Then we have those transporters who have uh, one truck or two trucks, so they are independent transporters. I've been using the app for the last maybe seven, eight months. And what I, what I appreciate about the app, once you log into the app, so the clients are there, and uh, you make your bid, and once you make your bid, the client will get back to you, and once you strike a deal, you go to the premises. Apart from convenience and affordability, the platform also provides users with security. Maggie Murundo is a financial expert and a frequent user of the app. I came to hear about Ngamia Hollers through a friend, by word of mouth. I was looking for a transporter to move my furniture. I saw Ngamia as a convenient uh, mode to use. I was quite busy at my workplace and I didn't have time to go looking for, uh, for transporters. So uh, I looked up on the app that they have, the Ngamia app. I downloaded through the uh, Play Store, uh, registered, then I put up the request. It was really fast. I got bids from various uh, transporters. I went with the one that I was comfortable with, and within a short time, I was able to move my, my, my furniture. Before even uh, the transporter is paid, uh, there's a system the way uh, Ngamia will get the money, and uh, they will hold the money in, in, in their system until the, the customer is satisfied with the job that has been done by the transporter, that's when they release the money. So yeah, in terms of even uh, security and being uh, scammed or anything of that sort, that is taken care of by Ngamia. Another security feature about Ngamia is the tracking system. So I was able to track the transporter 
until the destination. And once uh, they arrived, I was able also to confirm that my furniture were in good condition, as well as uh, confirming that the transporter had arrived, so that we were able to also to notify Ngamia to, to just finish the payment. So uh, using Gamia has been convenient, affordable, and very efficient. Another plus about the platform is added publicity and visibility to users. At the same time, uh, most of our transporters whom actually are doing business with us, we make it easier for them to do some little bit of advertisement on, uh, on our product called Maki. As, as, as SMEs, we realize that uh, they need to have exposure of what kind of business they are doing. So that that exposure makes them to get more businesses going on for them. And the best way sometimes is the social media, which is great. But our product makes it easier for them to be streamlined or categorized in a way where it's easy to find these transporters and any other businesses at small scale so that we have traction of what kind of business in the country. Since inception, Gamia has successfully completed over 2,000 movements all over Kenya and beyond. And being a software company, Gamia's accessibility from anywhere in the world makes it ideal for those in the diaspora. We realize that there's a lot of projects that the Kenyans and the diaspora are undertaking in the country. And those kind of activities predominantly need transportation and now you do not have to give control to somebody else. You can actually have control on your lap where you pick the kind of product you want to move and you pay them instantly online. With barely three years in operation, the platform is already gaining huge traction and according to the users, this success indicates that the company is set to become Kenya's next tech giant. Thank you, Alex, for that story. And that brings us to the end of the show today. We appreciate you sticking with us from Kentucky in the U.S. to even right here in the 254. On behalf of the crew involved in the production of this particular show, we say many thanks for watching and see you next time. Daring Abroad is brought to you by our friends at Remitly. Download the Remitly app to send money back home.